Geek Seekers, I'm Nick. Today we're taking a bit of a look at a new motherboard. This is the X670E Aorus Master from Gigabyte and it supports these brand new Ryzen 7000 CPUs. But before we continue this video, make sure you're actually subscribed with notifications turned on because YouTube has been doing some really weird things and unsubbing people from our channel again. So just make sure you're subscribed and if you're not subscribed, just hit it while you're there. We've got lots of cool content. And as usual with our motherboard videos, ladies and gents, these videos are not reviews, they're just overviews so we can take a bit of a closer look at all of the things on the board, what physically comes in the box and all that jazz. So without further ado, a do do do, let's do. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. Let's get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at all the things that come in the box with this brand new motherboard. First up, we've got the sheet of stickers. I don't know why people are still interested in these, but you know, if it's your thing, it's your thing. Next up, we've got the little Aorus badge. We all know what happens with this, guys. If you put this on your case or anywhere in your system, you're gonna get more FPS, right? That's how stickers work, right? Okay, let's open up the flap on the left. First up, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this motherboard. This is a pretty standard thing these days. Next up, we've got an assortment of RGB extension cables. Uh, basically, these just convert them into different types of RGB connectors, pretty standard stuff. We've also got the G connector. This allows you to put all your case wiring into a single block to plug into your motherboard. This does actually make it easier, and this is something that I personally use. All right, what's under the right flap? First up, we've got some SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. There are four of these cables in total. Then we've got some Velcro straps to help with cable management. We've also got some acoustic and thermal probes. There are two thermal probes here to give you readouts for different parts of your case. And there's also an acoustic probe that listens to the acoustics inside of the case and can adjust the fan curves accordingly. All right, let's unsheath that brand new X670E motherboard from Gigabyte and take a bit of a closer look at what makes this board tick. But first, we need to visit our friends over at Peeler Corp. And there is a lot of peeling to be done on these brand new motherboards. Look at that. Ooh la la. Ooh, look, there's even more. Some people aren't into it, but I tell you what, I'm definitely into peeling stuff. All right. What do we got here? We've got the front panel audio header. There's a three pin, five volt addressable RGB header, as well as a four pin, 12 volt analog RGB header. There is some TPM header connections for additional TPM, which you don't need really. There's three PWM fan connectors, two USB 2.0 headers for things like AIOs and RGB controls and all that jazz. There's two USB 3.2 front panel header connectors and there's the front panel connectors for all your lights and all your switches to let you know that your system is up and running. Then along the edge of the board, we've got the reset switch, two PWM fan headers, six SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. You've got some other headers for stuff like Thunderbolt and for some of the probes and sensors and that kind of jazz. You've also got an LED array to let you know what the status of your system is, a USB type C front panel header. There's also two more PWM fan headers. There's the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new X670E master. There's also a postcode LED screen to let you know what's going on if something's happening with your system posting and a power button. And above that, there are some more RGB headers and there's the PWM fan connectors for your AIO pump, if that's what you're using, as well as your CPU fans and all that jazz. And towards the top left-hand side of the board, you've got two EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new Ryzen 7000 processor. For PCIe slots, the top PCIe slot is a full by 16 PCIe Gen 5 slot that is connected directly up to the CPU. There's also two more additional by 16 size slots. The middle slot is a by 4 PCIe Gen 4 slot and the bottom one is a by 2 PCIe Gen 3 slot. Now, this board features 
AMD's brand new X670 e chipset. It is slightly different in the fact that it gives you more PCIe Gen 5 connectivity and that kind of stuff with storage. As far as the VRM layout, the X670 e Aorus Master features a twin 16 plus 2 plus 2 phase digital VRM setup with 105 amp power stages. And as you can see, the VRM cooling is quite extensive. Now this features AMD's brand new AM5 socket, which is actually LGA 1718. And if this is your first time seeing the socket, you'll notice a few things, right? Now it is an LGA socket and it has a lever to open the socket. So I'm gonna show you how to do this for the first time. Basically just unclip the lever, push the lever back towards the bottom of the board and lift the lid open. Now you'll see that this is LGA, so there's no more pins on the CPUs themselves. All of the pins are on the socket itself. Now I'll just give you another look at a bit of a different angle. The other thing you'll probably notice is it retains AIM4 cooler compatibility, as you can see by the stock cooler mounting on the motherboard that comes pre-installed. So yeah, an interesting new socket from AMD. If we flip the board over, you can see that it's got a full cover backplate and even the backplate for the socket looks similar to AM4 as well. Now these backplates on these boards aren't just for looks. A lot of what this does is help distribute the heat along the back of the board as well. Now this board supports DDR5 memory only and this board will support up to 128 gigs of DDR5 memory up to 5200 mega transfers. Now this is what they're saying but I've used fast memory and it's been no problem. Now, a new feature of a lot of these boards we're seeing is this little button here. What does this button do? Well, it actually opens up the top PCIe slot. We actually saw this with ASUS boards with Z690, so it is a nice little feature to help you open up the slots. Now, it's got a lot of storage on this board as well. We've got some PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots. I'm gonna show you the differences here. So we'll just pull the heat sinks off so we can get a bit of a look at all of the storage. There are four M.2 slots in total on this board. The top slots are PCIe Gen 5 and the bottom are PCIe Gen 4. So the major difference here, well, just visually, is the top M.2 slots have that silver shroud on the top that indicates that it's a PCIe Gen 5 slot. Now, there are a few other nuances here with these slots. The first being the keying is different between the slots. So you'll notice that the key on the Gen 5 slot has a square key and the regular Gen 4 or Gen 3 slot has a round key. And I'm pretty sure that's to do with the differentiation between using the M.2s when the Gen 5 drives finally come out. Something handy that Gigabyte has adopted that we've seen on other boards from previous generations is no more M.2 screws, it's all clips and Gigabyte's gone one step further and has made the clips spring-loaded. Lastly, for the rear IO, we've got a Q flash button, we've got the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E, a display port, and an HDMI port because all of these new CPUs have integrated graphics. There's a bunch of USB type A ports, there's some USB type C ports, there's 2.5 gigabit ethernet. However, you'll notice that they've kind of cut back on the audio for the master. It doesn't have all of the connectors. You've got your line out, your mic in, and an optical slash SPDIF audio connector. It's a bit different to what we've seen on boards in the past, but it's probably to save space. And also, it has that integrated IO shield. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the brand new Gigabyte X670e Aorus Master. 
As you can tell, they've actually done a lot here with these new AM5 boards, but they've also given with one hand and taketh away with the other when it comes to the audio interface on this board, which actually I thought was quite interesting. Now, if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these boards, with the price of this board, this thing is going to be super duper expensive. And what we've seen so far with the CPUs is AMD actually kind of missed out on the value proposition for this generation. So, you know, <laughs> being controversial and saying the things that I say, that's usually Intel's problem. But now it seems like AMD might be doing a little bit of an Intel this generation. And if I'm being honest, it might be better to wait for the 3 dv cache versions or to see what's happening with Raptor Lake. So. Yeah, this video originally got filmed in about August and I don't know pricing or availability or anything like that for this board. So what I'll do is I'll update the description once I find out because again, we're actually filming this pre-launch, so pre-Ryzen 7000. And as of filming this, and we're actually re-filming this, the Ryzen 7000 review embargo got dropped yesterday. So we have all of that content. I'll link to those videos down below in the description if you wanna check that out at your own leisure. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yep, let us know what you think of these new Ryzen 7000 CPUs and their performance. We've got a bunch more on the way now. We're gonna be doing some more builds and all that stuff. You know how we do, ladies and gents. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, ladies and gents, make sure you hit the share button and share it to some people that you care about and you love and all that jazz. And just get our videos in front of more people's eyes because like I mentioned in the start of the video, YouTube is absolutely broken at the moment. So let's help fix it. Thanks for watching.